Okay, good. Check litigation. Too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the, the to the final meeting of the Board of Delaware County Board of Commissioners of 2017. It's December 28th, and if everyone would please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Um, I'm Jeff Benson, President of the Board. To my left is our Vice President, Gary Merrill. To my right is fellow Commissioner Bob Lewis and our County Administrator, Mike Frummer. And Sarah DeNova is our clerk today. So we can begin. Resolution number 17-1358. In the matter of approving the electronic record of the proceedings of regular meeting held December 21st, 2017. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-1358. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. We have no public or elected comment this morning. Resolution number 17-1359. In the matter of approving purchase orders, then an announce certificates and payments of warrants in batch numbers CMAPR1227 and memo transfers in batch numbers MTAPR1227. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 17-1359. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 17-1360. In the matter of approving the following list of carryover purchase orders for 2018. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 17-1360. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-1361. In the matter of approving travel expense requests. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 17-1361. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-1362, setting date and time for viewing the public hearing for consideration of the homestead at Scioto Reserve Section 1, drainage maintenance improvement petition filed by homestead at Scioto Reserve and others. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-1362. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Resolution number 17-1363, in the matter of withdrawing the annexation petition filed on December 6, 2017, by agent for the petitioner, Andrew P. Wecker, requesting annexation of 89.618 acres, more or less, in Delaware Township to the City of Delaware. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-1363. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number, oh, sorry. Got a roll on there. Uh, we have a discussion, possibly, of the Delaware County Land Utilization Corporation. Mr. President, members of the board, I'm John Peterson, uh, treasurer here in Delaware uh, County. And I'm pleased to have with me uh, Robert, the assistant uh, prosecutor, uh, intern assistant prosecutor. I'm not sure what the proper title is. <laughs> but uh, we would not be in the position we're in today to consider the implementation of a land bank without Robert's thorough, uh, thorough work. Uh, 47 states, 47 counties within this state, would be the 48th, um, have approved uh, land reutilization uh, corporations. I can pretty confidently say no county has been as well prepared to move forward as, as this county, and, and Robert's to thank for that. Uh, about a year and a half, I think, maybe a year and a quarter. Uh, we had a presentation here. Um, Ohio is a leader in uh, reutilization uh, efforts, and we had uh, the two reasons present uh, for that to give a presentation to the board. Uh, uh, Robin Thomas and Jim Rakowski. Uh, we answered questions at that point, and in subsequent conversations with uh, several of you, I've tried to answer uh, every question that, uh, that you had. Um, but we're now ready to move forward. The resolution you have before us directs me to file articles of incorporation with the Secretary of State, which would uh, technically, legally, uh, form the Land Reutilization Fund. And that's a tongue twister. I'm going to call it a county land bank from here on out. Uh, at that point, it would um, start its life as a separate corporate entity. And um, the board, uh, which is primarily statutorily prescribed, two county commissioners, uh, county treasurer, representative from the largest municipality, a representative from a towny, uh, t 
township that is uh, greater in population than 10,000. That person would represent all the townships. As a municipal uh, representative, would represent all municipalities. And so uh, this is the, the next step. Uh, hopefully you will positively uh, consider uh, this resolution, which is, uh, again, directing me to um, file uh, request for articles of incorporation with the Secretary of State. I will uh, speak to uh, general concerns today to the extent I am able, and I believe I can field most of your questions, but in case it gets to a legal fine point, uh, Robert's uh, here to assist us in that regard. Just, I just had a question again, um, or rather, if you could just give, it's not really a question, but if you could just give us a summary of, of why we need sure. the bank. Sure, sure. Uh, that would be great. Commissioner Lewis, uh, absolutely, uh, through the president. Um, a county uh, land bank is primarily uh, for the purpose of, it's called reutilization for a reason. It's an attempt to take properties that are abandoned and return them to productive use. Um, we have several ways to determine whether it's abandoned. No payment of property taxes over a period of years. Uh, no successful attempt to reach the owner. Uh, grass isn't cut. Utilities uh, aren't paid. A variety of ways to do that. Uh, a land bank in that situation has authority uh, under the statutes and under the rules that the land bank would uh, promulgate uh, after they're formed, uh, has authority to, after several foreclosures, to take property to assist in returning it again to productive use. That can be in a variety uh, of situations. We can have a property, uh, we get very regularly uh, calls from individuals, primarily neighbors of a property that's been abandoned by all those uh, criteria. And they say, oh, when are you, you going to foreclose? And so we foreclose, but still no purchaser, and it just sits there. Uh, it's a blight uh, on that particular area. It's a devaluation to the property owner who's brought it to our attention. We have one property, um, I think I mentioned to perhaps you, uh, Mr. President, uh, in Shawnee Hills, a township a trustee called me, said, John, we got a, we got a problem. There's a property uh, in Shawnee Hills that um, you need to do something about, uh, foreclose or something. Uh, and the neighbors had already called me, so I was aware of the property, and, and every one of them said, John, the only thing that's living in there are raccoons. And, uh, you know, terrible degradation of the property. And so we were prepared to move ahead with foreclosure. Uh, the irony on that particular instance, and that would be a perfect situation for land bank. In that particular situation, uh, an heir uh, was found, did come forward, and that could happen on any property uh, that we move forward uh, with. There's extensive um, notice requirements that we preserve the rights of the owner to redeem the property if they wish. Um, so that's another example. Just as importantly, the county land bank is the only repository, receiver, of federal demolition funds. We have missed two rounds of demolition funds because we didn't have a land bank. We had, as, as commissioners know and as members of the public know, uh, had several rounds before that, but those, those were state funds received by Attorney General Mike DeWine in a, a predatory, uh, predatory lending lawsuit. But the federal funds, uh, we've missed. Don't know what Delaware County's allocation would have been, but I suggest it would be at least in the amount of tens of thousands of dollars, perhaps more. And uh, don't have a great need, but I think the 700000 or whatever we received before, we used it all. So there, there is a, a need there, and that is a benefit. We hear uh, talk. Uh, from the administration, from Washington, that they're about to begin on an infrastructure initiative. If that does, in fact, begin to move at whatever pace, uh, it is hard to imagine that any serious infrastructure movement would not include monies provided to local governments for demolition. It's just hard to imagine that. It's such an integral part of 
that process. So, Commissioner Lewis, uh, through the President, that's probably more than you wanted. No, no, that's no very helpful. <clears throat> I have a couple questions. Sure. I have a couple of questions. In fact, I found the old folder from 18 months ago. How about it? So, That's good. Um, just some of them, just for clarification, uh, for I think for everybody, and sure. certainly for myself. But the goal is to return these properties to paying property taxes in the county for the benefit of the taxpayers. Absolutely. And the school districts, et cetera. That's et cetera. the reason it was conceived statutorily, and that's the way it operates. Okay. Um, could you give us an estimate of the number of properties in the county that you think might fit the criteria as you understand it? Yeah, based on the volume that we've seen anecdotally from taxpayers calling, I'd say it's in the dozens, not the hundreds. You know, this law was conceived uh, and enacted uh, originally, um, happened to be during my time in the General Assembly. It was conceived and uh, enacted to benefit one county. Cuyahoga. And they moved forward taking entire city blocks at a time. And um, that was appropriate there. Same in Youngstown, Mahoney County. That's not the situation we will have. And so we will have probably dozens, but uh, no more than that. Okay. Um, the owner has the right to bring their taxes current and uh, it to maintain the property, and if they don't, then once it goes into the land bank, they're out of it. Is that right, a right. statement? Uh, yes, Commissioner um, Merrill, through the President. Uh, there are multiple opportunities, even before this process starts, for someone to bring their property taxes current. We send uh, a delinquent tax bill each year for those taxes that are in arrearage. We offer contract payment plans. Uh, at any point, you can redeem the whole property. So that's all happened. It's advertised, so um, an owner would know they were in a situation that deserves some attention. Um, then, and only then, can we commence activities. And during the activities that we would uh, move forward with, extensive public notice, uh, two foreclosures have to happen. Um, and the, the title work that would be done and the searching that the county prosecutor assists us with would be extensive. And um, so, yes. So the landowner can't uh, let this program bring the property up to standards and they take it back over. They have to do it before that process begins. Is that an accurate statement or an accurate statement? Essentially, yes. Essentially, yes. If the corporation wanted to form uh, through its rules and regulations, there's a lot of latitude, uh, and the structure will take uh, of what the latitude is will take place after formulation of some regulations. It's conceivable that a um, land bank board uh, enacted under these provisions would, by resolution, they act by resolution as, as well, uh, would say that they would consider prior owners. I mean, that could be done. Um, or, on the other hand, uh, the opposite uh, situation could occur. It could be a, an agreement, uh, a regulation by the land bank that, no, the land bank will not uh, consider. Uh, it, that's totally up to the, uh, the board. It's a lot of latitude for the uh, directors of the uh, board of the reutilization fund. Yeah, I guess my only thought is if federal dollars are put into improving the property, the, that old landowner who created the problem shouldn't be rewarded for it, so uh, they, sh they shouldn't get it back unless they're <coughs> yeah, that, reimbursing the federal. That would be my instinct uh, as well. But again, that's a, a matter for uh, the two commissioners sitting on the board, the treasurer, uh, the municipal and township representative acting as a board on what they deem is appropriate under the statute. And one last question. They hear that all the time, yeah. and they, they never believe me. <laughs> Uh, staffing, current staffing, or are we going to have to add somebody to manage this? Excellent question. Um, again, in the larger counties, an extensive operational organizational structure. Uh, they take thousands of properties. They can't do that with the staff in the treasurer's office. I think we can. Uh, we can handle that. So at least in the beginning, it's anticipated that I will handle uh, administrative work and then present that to the board. If the board doesn't like that, then they can reverse that and, and change it to hiring an executive director uh, and so forth. 
uh, my anticipation is we'll fund this with a delinquent tax fund, which is a fund that's set aside for the Treasurer to collect delinquent taxes, which is right at the heart of this proposal. Um, a lot of counties go through that pretty quickly. We've tried to be uh, frugal. There's over a million dollars sitting in that fund. Is it? <laughs> I, 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 I did it then. I did it. <laughs> you said uh, you're funded out of that fund, but federal dollars were also involved. So is it a mix of the two? No federal dollars are involved initially. There's no federal dollars no, involved. This, right? this is a local corporation. Okay, because you said something uh, about accessing federal funding. Yeah, right? well, it, it's, it's clear in the federal statutes that enacted um, infrastructure dollars, demolition dollars, that no county was eligible that did not have a land bank. So it's not an Ohio requirement, it's a federal requirement, but the, requ what, the requirements to implement are state requirements. So if we have a land bank, there's the potential we might have some federal dollars. Exactly right. Uh, and as I said, uh, Commissioner Amaro through uh, the President, uh, we have missed two rounds. We just uh, weren't uh, prepared with this land bank, and so now, uh, and there may never be uh, any more cash that flows through demolition. But if there is, and I think under an infrastructure, uh, a comprehensive infrastructure initiative, probably will be, this time we'll be prepared. Well, this is a statement, not a question, so I'm good on this one. <laughs> it, would, it would appear that what we really are talking about is trying to prevent this from ever being a problem in our county by getting, in, in it, getting to it early when we have these blighted properties so we don't get down the road and we have a, like some of the other counties may have. So yes. And, and let me add to an answer, a response I made moments ago. Uh, and that was uh, in regard to uh, how many uh, may be subject, how many properties may be subject to this. Uh, we have uh, one advantage. Uh, other counties that use uh, a tax delinquent uh, collection firm selling tax delinquent certificates um, have the same advantage, and that is they don't buy a tax lien certificate on a property they don't think they can sell at some point uh, if they need to. Most of them uh, collect the tax ultimately. Uh, they're out in the field, and they have already agreed at no cost to the county to provide uh, us with properties that based on their review, because they're driving all over the county, based on their review, they have sensed maybe an appropriate uh, land bank acquisition. So I am done. Sure. I'm positive. <laughs> All right. You guys are folder too, apparently. Yeah, I found, found the, the, when Jim and Robin came and presented, it was April, back in April of 2016. Yeah. Or may, maybe May. But anyway, it was very important. I, I had just a couple of comments. Um, I think this is a good tool, you know, to have to keep the county, you know, vibrant and address the, the problem properties. Again, not many. We're, we're fortunate that we don't have many. Like Cuyahoga had thousands and thousands of properties that uh, and Franklin County had, had probably had thousands as well. So it, it really was very active there. Um, and we talked about the funding. I know you and I talked yesterday about the funding, and that's, that's – it's uh, – it's good that we've got some funds lined up because it does take seed money to, to acquire the properties, fix them up, you know, dem demo them if they need to be, um, maintain them, insure them, et cetera. Um, so I know one of my concerns is just liability. You know, being a property owner, there is liability. Now it's a separate corporation, so I'm sure it'll have yeah, appropriate and insurance. question. Uh, there are indemnification um, clauses, um, but beyond that we will be insured. At least my recommendation to the corporation will uh, be to buy insurance uh, guarding against uh, any uh, prospective liability situation. Uh, every other land bank that I know of um, uh, has done that. I think we can do that. Uh, it's an expense, but I think a relatively modest one, taking into account how many properties we will handle. And that expense, again, will be handled with uh, DTAC funds. Right. And then the proceeds from the subsequent sale of this property, once it's been fixed up or demolished and sold as land, then goes back to the corporation, which would but reimburse that's, the... That's exactly right. The, the intent is that that's the ongoing revenue. Mm -hmm. um, that if we don't have many, there's not a high need for ongoing revenue. <clears throat> that's good. 
because we're not making a lot. But in a situation where there's a regular and recurring stream of those, any um, surplus uh, funds left from getting it back into productive use would go into the land bank. Great. Um, and then, of course, the benefit would also be the property taxes. Yeah. Now begin to be generated and yeah. go to our schools. So, but just to be clear, I think you and I talked yesterday about the property taxes that are owed on these properties going through the land bank are not paid by the delinquent tax fund. They just are never collected. Yes. The, the only um, uh, thing that remains after the two foreclosures um, and the forfeit of the property are any federal liens uh, or easements um, that may exist. Those remain in place. Any other taxes, any liens uh, of vendors, mechanics liens, uh, vendor liens of other type, are extinguished. Um, and that's really at the heart and soul of what this is, so that right. the property owner can take it free and clear. Um, Title's cleared up and everything. Yeah. Um, so again, I want to commend you for that. I, I, Treasurer Peterson and Robert, thank you for your work and, and leadership on this. I think this is an important tool for the county to have. and. I uh, wish we'd had it sooner because we could have had yep. some of that funding. Um, and I would also encourage whoever is on this to take advantage of the finance authority. I think you and I talked about that yesterday. The finance authority does have some tools that could, um, you know, possibly help with some of the bigger transactions that uh, may come before Absolutely. the board. Uh, excellent point, Mr. Uh, President. In regard to relationships between other governmental entities, other quasi, um, that again would be up to the board to structure those, and, and there's very little limitation on that. So whether it was the Finance Authority, whether it was the Regional Planning Commission, whether it was city or townships, uh, the Health District, uh, we had a lot of latitude in terms of what agreements we could uh, anticipate and enter into. Right. Okay. I don't know any other questions. Just one. Is it only trigger taxes, delay on tra taxes, or are there other triggers that could play a role in this property going to land bank? Yeah, as, as, um, uh, as I uh, mentioned a little earlier, um, taxes are primary, that if you've um, not paid 15 years of property tax, pretty good sense you're walking away from the property. But in addition to that, um, utilities, we work with utilities. If they've uh, shut them off for an extended period of time, if the township municipality has had continuous experience having to go in and mow the property, uh, if the health district has had to come in to do certain minimal uh, restorations to present a public health hazard. Uh, so there, there's no, that's not specified in statute. So that, again, would be a matter for the corporation to set out how they would deem an abandoned property. We'll give you a real general. I was at an Ashley meeting, so I don't know the property, so it won't be, per, it won't be specific to a property. But there was a property that 405 South Street. That was wasn't had no water. Yeah. They, people inhabited the property, but they couldn't flush the toilets because there was no water, and it was a health issue. Is that something that theoretically could have fit? Yes, in absolutely. And that particular. So property, you know the property. Okay. Yeah, you, Mr. Uh, uh, President and uh, Commissioner Mayor, you brought that to my attention, and thank you uh, for that. Oh, thank and it was uh, shortly thereafter the mayor brought it to my attention. And so it has been a public health hazard, a nuisance, so we are in an ongoing forfeiture, a foreclosure process right now. If no one would like to buy that, that would be exactly the type of property that we could take. And that would seem to be something that would be good for the community as a whole. And, and that's the intent. Right. That's the intent, wins. that we benefit the community at large. It's an important concept the community does win. Um, well, Mr. Mr. President, as a uh, politician, I've, I've spoken too long. Uh, <laughs> Robert, is there anything that um, I didn't uh, address that you think is important to the board? Um, you would... Go right ahead, if you could identify yourself. And... Robert Yuptango, Assistant prosecuting, prosecuting Attorney, Blattler County Prosecutor's Office. Um, Treasurer Peterson has pretty much set up all the important points on establishing a land bank. It's, it pretty much helps um, the and grow the community through economic development, facilitate and realize vacant, abandoned, tax foreclosed property, and utilize any federal, state, or private funding to help fund the organization. In terms of the last point you guys were making, you all were making, 
in terms of working with the with cities and municipalities. I did some research and I've been working with the uh, other counties that have established land banks. In terms of interaction with the cities, a land bank and the cities would enter into a memorandum of understanding to serve two essential purposes. First, they would serve as the preemptory type of documents which assures municipalities that the LRC does not preempt their planning, acquisition rights in general, ability to acquire properties from tax foreclosures prior to the land bank. And the, uh, the boilerplate part of the document basically restates the statutory rights of the cities. Likewise, if the land bank secures a property from sources other than tax foreclosure, the city has an absolute right within 30 days after recording such acquisition to request and receive such properties from the land bank on the same terms and conditions as a land bank acquiring the property. So there are built-in partnerships between the land bank and the cities in which they can acquire tax foreclosed properties. Good. That's good. Um, I, I did have a, a question. When do you expect to f actually legally form the corporation? When would the first board meeting be? Depending on how my, um, how quickly my attorneys act, <laughs> uh, probably within a couple weeks we'll file the request for, for articles uh, of incorporation. Uh, we don't really have any sense of control over how long uh, it would take for them to turn this around, but the experience of the other 47 counties is they turn it pretty quickly, within a matter of days. Uh, not months and years. Mm -hmm. So um, that, those would be the first steps. Then I think at that point it would be an appropriate time for the statutory members of the uh, land bank to sit down and begin to talk about its effective utilization okay. uh, in Delaware County. Okay. I'd, I'd just like to thank Robert and uh, you, Treasurer Peterson, too, for all your work on right. this. And it, it really is a win-win for the county, for, for our community. Thank you. It's a good tag team. I hope the county prosecutor keeps him around a little longer. <laughs> very, very thorough work. Very thorough. All right. Can I ask a very resolution? Good. Yeah. Resolution number 17-1364. Establishing the Delaware County Land Reutilization Corporation for the Delaware County Treasurer's Office in accordance with RC 5722.02, effective December 8, 28, 2017, approving initial articles of incorporation. So moved. Second. Further discussion? We'll take a vote. Vote on motion 17-1364. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. President, members of the board, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. Good, good luck. Work, good luck with all your work yeah. today yeah, it's before it's the busy. new year ends. Get those checks processed. Yeah, yeah. those. <laughs> including, including the two. Including the two. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Sorry. Resolution number 17-1365, in the matter of approving a second lease modification agreement by and between the Tuller Square North Point LLC and the Delaware County Commissioners for the Clerk of Courts Title Office at North Point Plaza. So move. Second. Discussion. Good morning. I'm Natalie Fravel, Delaware County Clerk of Courts. Good morning to members of the board. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm here today to present the um, lease renewal agreement that we have with Tuller Square at the North Point Plaza in Lewis Center. Uh, the North Point Plaza is the home to our satellite title office that you are all familiar with. Um, we opened almost 15 years ago in May of 2003. So um, now we are entering into a new lease agreement. They asked initially for a 12 to 15 percent increase in our monthly base rent, and I was able to negotiate that down to 8 percent. So um, I think you have all reviewed it. Um, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Eric Hostetler prepared it for me and um, did some research with the landlord and um, presented it to the board. And it's the, the rate is fixed for five years? Fixed for five years, yes. It, there's an escalator if we want to do another five-year term? Yes, there is. Okay. So the rate doesn't change for that five-year period. It's 8% across the board. Correct, yes. All right. And uh, th this has done, this office has done very well. You've been very well run. Uh, Thank you. I compliment you and, and your team. And, Thanks. And that's been a real nice, nice uh, um, program for the county, serving the taxpayers of or the title owners of Delaware County as well as other counties. Yes, thank you. So, so again, uh, glad that we have done such a good job and, and we'll renew this. Take a vote. Vote on motion 17-1365. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 17-1366. 
in the matter of approving a joint application by the prosecuting attorney and the Delaware County Board of Commissioners to authorize the appointment of legal counsel Laura McGregor Calmack, Esquire, to advise, represent, prosecute on behalf of and or defend the Delaware County Board of Elections and then as sorry, in and as related to the matter involving a referendum petition concerning Berlin Township. So moved. Second. Discussion? Christopher Batts, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney with the Delaware County Prosecuting Attorney's Office. I'm here with Anthony Sadie, who is the uh, Deputy Director at the Board of Elections. I realize I don't look like Carol O'Brien here today. Um, <laughs> I saw Carol this morning, and she wanted to uh, me to pass along that she's sorry that she couldn't be here this morning. As you know from our meeting last week, she's still recovering from some surgery, um, and um, so she's still kind of in that process at this point, so she asked if I would come. But in any event, uh, this is a, uh, an application under Revised Code uh, 305.14 to appoint outside counsel for the Board of Elections in a matter involving um, a referendum petition that's been filed in Berlin Township. Um, the referendum... Obviously, our office is, is counsel to both the township and the Board of Elections. Uh, we've counseled the uh, township on this particular matter, and there's uh, a, um, an actual perceived conflict of interest here uh, that the Board of Elections has gone ahead and asked that they uh, be able to have outside counsel on this. Um, they would be responsible for um, determining that outside counsel and then paying for that outside counsel. It requires a joint application under the statute between the prosecutor's office and the commissioners uh, to the common police court who actually, uh, if that were approved, then the, the board could go ahead and hire outside counsel. Um, I believe you have in the journal in front of you a copy of the actual application. Carol has gone ahead and signed that very painfully at this point, but she's gone ahead and signed it. Um, since it was her, her right arm that she had some, some surgery on, it was a little more difficult to sign it, and she actually had to go ahead and sign this. So uh, she has, uh, and that's why we're before you this morning. I don't know if Anthony has anything that he wants to add uh, in regards to this, but um, that's what you have before you. No, I do not have anything to add. Chris, something okay. up? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this, this uh, turns out. It's a, it's a kind of a blighted property. Yeah. Be perfectly honest, and it's being redeveloped, and there's other issues associated with it. So it'll be interesting to see just how it how it does play out. Any other comments? All right, vote. Got on motion one seven dash one three six six. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Resolution number one seven dash one three seven seven. In the matter of approving the agreement by and between the Board of Delaware County Commissioners, the Delaware County Prosecuting Attorney, and NT Business Technologies Incorporated. So moved. Second. Discussion? Good morning, Commissioners. Nicole Ford with the Delaware County Prosecutor's Office. Our copier lease agreement with MT Business and our office is soon to expire. We would like to renew our contract that would allow us to keep one of our current copiers and replace an existing copier with a slightly newer model. Our monthly costs will actually lower by $54 a month, and the term of our, this agreement is for 39 months, and we would have the opportunity to renew at the end of the agreement. All right, vote. Vote so on motion 17-1377. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. I do have a comment. Thanks, we've, we've made this before. Copiers is one year under purchasing that we need to take a look at. And uh, obviously we have to move forward until we do that process. But I would strongly encourage that we make that a priority. I agree. Yeah, commissioners, um, Nicole had reached out to me about this, and we... Um, utilize the comprehensive uh, bidding pro uh, results of the bidding process that uh, JFS did uh, recently, and uh, it so happened that the low bidder on that was the the current vendor. But yeah, I, I totally agree, and I think that that that'll be a focus into the new year. I suspect with service agreements, the actual copier cost, the scale of purchasing in one location would benefit everybody and, and ultimately benefit the taxpayers. And maybe the statewide buying program, too. I don't know if that has applicability with this sort of items. Does it? I don't know. Anyway, we can look into that. Yeah, the, I think when uh, JFS did their analysis, they compared it to the state program, and the, the results of their bid were significantly less than and the statewide. The statewide. Okay. 
Good. In that particular area. Right. Obviously, yeah. it depends on the category. So. Okay. Good. All right. Next topic. Resolution number 17-1378. In the matter of amending an agreement between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners, the Delaware County Auditor, and Securian LLC for the addition of Track It to One Solution software. No move. Second. Discussion. Bob Land, Economic Development Director. Commissioner, thank you for the opportunity today to present this item to you before you use a request to amend an existing agreement with Superior LLC. This amendment will allow us to bring the track it portion of the software system of one solution online. This software will allow our development-oriented departments to be on the same page when conducting reviews of both commercial and residential plans. This will allow enhanced communication between the various departments and offices, as well as GIS coordination and enhanced processing overall. Staff conduct an RFP process, and through that process determined that it would be best to amend the existing agreement with Superior LLC to bring on the track at software. Um, we believe this will reduce both training and onboarding time um, for that activity. Further, the project corresponds with economic development key initiatives to enhance our development process. This concept has been well received by the development community when presented to them, including the BIA during conversations with them. Finally, the implementation of this cost has been included within the 2018 budget um, and has been broken out to the various departments and offices that will be participating in the software system. I would like to thank both Cy and Jenna for their work on this item at this time um, and then answer any questions that you may have regarding this item. Thank you. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I, I guess not really a question, it's a comment. I, I want to thank you for leading on this effort. I know it's been, been longer than we had hoped to get the, to this point, but I think this will really make it easier to do business in Delaware County. Um, and that's very important that we become an easier place to do business to attract the businesses that we want to attract. Um, so again, putting this all online and, and uh, sharing it with the various departments, townships, cities, villages, et cetera, will be very beneficial to, to the county and all those jurisdictions. So, so it's great. I think it's a good step forward. Bob, but, uh, oh, well, go ahead. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, someone from a township then who, who uses this software, how will that work then? If townships do wish to join the system, they will be able to. Right now we're focusing on getting the county offices and departments online, um, but we have had interest from Genoa, Berkshire, um, and Orange Township, as well as Liberty, to engage with us and Superior and to bring this product online for them. Okay, great, great, yeah. The uniformity will be oh, is, is online. Huge. Uniformity and online, right? Right. Thank Easier. you. Well, we do have representative from Superior here today, so if you do have questions for that company, we can uh, allow them to answer as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I don't have any questions for. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Sounds Looking great. forward to Thank it. Thank you. Take a vote. Vote on motion one seven dash one three seven eight. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Resolution number 17-1379. In the matter of approving the revolving loan fund administration agreement between Delaware County and the State of Ohio Development Services Agency. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Jenna Jackson, the Economic Development Coordinator. Um, this is the agreement that we have to approve once every three years with the state uh, to continue to administer the revolving loan fund. So I recommend your approval. How long have we been in this program? Do you know? Um, it was before my time. I'm not sure when it started. Okay. I would guess the early 2000s, if I had to guess. Okay. And what do we have in there, 160-some thousand? Yes. Okay. But no activity recently in it? Correct. Okay. All right. Vote. So a uh, motion, 17-1379. Mr. Bitten? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Resolution number 17-1380. In the matter of approving change order number three and change over order number four, to the developer contractor <coughs> agreement between Del <coughs> sorry Metro Development to LLC and Truco Construction Company Incorporated so to Clark Shaw Sanitary Sewer Line Project One. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, commissioners. Um, currently, we have uh, change orders uh, three and four um, being presented for your. Uh, uh, approval today. Um, one is a deduct in the amount of $6,552 $6, for deleting some casing grout. And the then we do have an addition for an additional uh, road patch on Butts Road 
uh, for some open cut construction. Uh, the net is uh, uh, that is an add of four thousand seven hundred fifty-two dollars and eighty-five cents. So, uh, in total, it is a, a negative uh, or it's a deduct to the overall contract of uh, about eighteen hundred dollars. Okay, vote. Vote on motion 17-1380. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 17-1381. In the matter of awarding a bid and awarding a cash lease to Todd L. Etchen for the lease of Delaware County Farm Land located at 6579 Moore Road. So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, commissioners, we uh, had received three bids um, to farm the 44 acres. Uh, out at the lower side of the treatment plant that we've previously been just mowing and, and performing maintenance on. Uh, the cost or the bids range from $192 an acre to $226 an acre. Uh, the, the highest bid was the $226 an acre and it'll uh, generate $9,944 per year of, of revenue from that. Yeah. So Great. Yeah, the $226 an acre rental, that's, that's really getting up there. Yeah, I, I, you know, definitely. And, and I think it fits that, that area. It's a very agricultural area to right, have that sure. buffer next to the plant will be nice. Sure. Yeah. All right. Oh. Oh, on motion 17 1381. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 17 1382. In the matter of accepting sanitary sewer improvements for Olentangy Falls East, Section 2. Okay. Second. Discussion? Uh, commissioners, the construction is complete, and we're recommending uh, approval of the improvements for Old Tangy Falls East Section 2. All right. Vote. Vote on motion 17-1382. Mr. Britton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-1383, approving the amended and restated subdividers agreement between NHG Development Group, LTD, and the Board of County Commissioners of Delaware County, Ohio, for the Tartan Fields Golf Club Community sub Subdivision. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, commissioners uh, presented is the amended and restated subdividers agreement. Um, the, the Tartan Fields plant, I think, through the years has been a, uh, an, an issue or a challenge, however you want to phrase it, uh, with the capacity and the way the original subdividers agreement was written that the uh, developer had, um, you know, full authority and control over the future connections. And we were able to, uh, I think, come up with a, a very good uh, amendment that clarifies a lot of things. It allows us to, uh, the county, to receive future connection fees for improvements, um, to recoup some filter improvements that we put into the plant. Uh, several years back, as well as 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 new connections as well. So, I I just like to uh, thank our uh, administrator for negotiating this because there were several, uh, as, as you just mentioned, there's several parts of this and needed to be discussed and worked out, and you came up with a creative win-win solution. Yeah, thank yeah. you. The original agreement was let's say poorly written, and. Um, uh, left a lot of things for debate, okay. and uh, this seems to be a win-win for everyone. We got the plant fixed now; it's running much better, and, and then this agreement is much better structured going forward. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks as well. All right, vote. Vote on motion one seven dash one three eight three. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Resolution number one seven dash one three eight four. In the matter of establishing, in, establishing and amending. Charges for the Delaware County Regional Sewer District in conformity with provisions of Section 611.02 of the Ohio Revised Code. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, commissioners, this uh, amendment of the connection fees, uh, last year at this time we had made changes to the connection fees for our Elm Creek and OECC tributary areas, which are our majority. Uh, this is, is coming back this, this next year and uh, establishing fees for the Tartan Fields uh, area, uh, clarifying some, some charges and things in the lower Scioto. Um, also, uh, um, like I said, just going through and, and coming up with this plan that by 2000, 
uh, 20 that everything is on the same uh, connection fee schedule. Um, it's been a very difficult administrative task, um, and I think that it fits uh, in, in step with our financial plan and our master plan that was approved. Yeah, again, I'd like to compliment you on, on uh, bringing this issue forward and, and working out a solution that will make it, again, easier and more straightforward for uh, uh, builders in this county, which is, which is very helpful. And it will help the sewer district, it will help the administration and everything. So, again, compliments to the team. Right. Vote. Vote on motion 17-1384. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. <laughs> Resolution number 17-1385. In the matter of approving the sanitary sewer improvement plans for courtyards at Muirfield Ridge. So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, the plans for this uh, development have uh, met all of our uh, requirements and we're recommending approval. All right, vote. Vote on motion 17-1385. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-1386. In the matter of approving a professional services agreement with Quality Control Inspection Incorporated for an on-call construction inspection services. So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, this uh, professional uh, services agreement that we've uh, that the sewer district has had for several years. It's basically to have uh, contract inspection services when our current staffing of four inspectors cannot cover all the construction going on. We typically use it during the uh, uh, peak summer season when a lot of people are, are building. Um, the inspection fees that we collect from the developments pays for the services. Uh, so there's no out-of-pocket expense to the county on this. All right, vote. Oh, on motion 17-1386, Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution Aye. number 17-1387, in the matter of approving a new fund, new organization key, supplemental appropriation, transfer of appropriation, transfer of funds, and repayment of advance. So moved. Second. Discussion? Good morning, Cy Kelly's Deputy Administrator. Um, this resolution will cover the, the remaining year-end cleanup items to ensure compliance. I'm also requesting $3 million to be transferred to the Capital Improvement Reserve Fund to help with the cost with the renovations of the old courthouse and any remaining dollars to be uh, towards the uh, career center. And then we also have a repayment of, an, of advance of $1.8 million from the South Old State project. I recommend your approval. Yeah, I want to compliment you on setting up a fund for the renovation of the old courthouse. I mean, that, that's, that's a great, obviously it needs to be done. We're, we're starting that process and it's good to have some money set aside and won't cover the entire amount probably, but it's good to have a big chunk of it set aside. Um, have we had a um, capital improvement reserve fund in the, in the past? No, we have not. Okay. I didn't think we had had one before. So, again, I think that's a good strategic uh, decision to implement one of those, and then hopefully we'll continue to fund it because we've got the Career Center coming not long after the, the old courthouse renovation. So I want to thank you for your leadership on that. Other comments, questions? All right. Vote. Yeah. Vote on motion 17-1387. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Resolution number 17-1388. In matter of authorizing the, con the continuation of advances from general fund dollars to various funds for the year 2017. So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, this resolution will continue these, or these advances that were made into 2018 where we will expect repayment of these funds. And I recommend your approval. Okay. Uh, vote. Vote on motion 17-1388. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Resolution number 17-1389. In the matter of the Delaware County Board of Commissioners approving a letter of support for the Delaware County pursuing admission into the network of age-friendly cities and communities initiative. So moved. Second. Discussion. I thought you were going to say something. Uh, I'll, I'll say something since you I was going to say something, but uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, now. Yeah, so, the, uh, but no question. This is rewritten basically uh, to 
there was some question about whether the county would be doing the work or uh, source point would be. So I've just okay. clarified and clarified that. Yeah. yeah, we are just supporting them through a resolution. They will provide the leadership and the work work effort. So, All right, vote. Vote on motion one seven dash one three eight nine. Mrs. Lewis, aye. Mr. Benton, aye. Mr. Murrow, aye. That brings us to administrator reports. Commissioners, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, one of the things today I wanted to just talk about, I, I really enjoy this time of year, and it's, it's, it's really the week between uh, Christmas and New Year's, because I think it gives us all a chance to kind of reflect upon um, the fun we've had in 2017 and then look forward to, to doing things even better in, in 2018. Um, I still remember my first day of employment as a, as a civil engineer. My, my boss pulled me aside and he said, this business is easy. Just plan your work and then work your plan. Okay? And then he came back in an hour and he said, but don't spend all your time planning. you got to get to work. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, as I look back, I, I just want to extend a, a big thank you to the commissioners on behalf of the directors and the administrator team. Um, this last year, it's amazing all the planning and, and all the initiatives that we've, you know, put together. Um, you know, the, the sewer district master plan was approved. The economic development did a, did a plan. Facilities did a master plan. JFS did a master plan. Uh, I don't know what you call Rob and, and Chris's uh, CIP for, for multiple years, you know, and, and EMS is doing a plan as well. Um, so I think that, that, you know, you guys have done an excellent job of supporting the departments and putting them in position to, you know, plan out the work. And then I, I feel like in t 2018, we just got to start working the plan. I think the budget was set up to, to do that. And so um, just wanted to thank you guys. I, there's a lot of, uh, you know, support and forward thinking put to the departments. And uh, I think uh, 2018 will be uh, uh, a lot of fun getting in and, and um, implementing those plans. So that's it. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I guess I would just echo that um, I think one of the most important things that we as a Board of Commissioners do is look into the future and develop a plan and then implement that plan. Um, and then are always checking to make sure the plan makes sense, you know, every year. So, again, I think that's that's great. We have accomplished a lot in terms of planning this year. Um, Commissioner Merrill? Well, I wasn't going to get nostalgic, but with your comments, I thought <laughs> I, I, I did everything you said, everything Commissioner Ben said. Uh, I'm looking through that window. I see a new courthouse that opened this year. Uh, the uh, person location that we purchased up north, which all these things continue to. Uh, I think our, I think we accept this role that our goal is to really plan for the future. Uh, and as I've said before, we're transitioning from a rural to an urban county, and we take I think we all take that job very seriously. We want to do it the right way. We want to make sure that the rural areas in our county are protected. We want to make sure that all counties are. are, are all parts of our county being properly, and we have a great team. Um, the, the directors, the leadership that you and Don and Cy provide, uh, uh, we, I think we've had a very, very successful year. And um, I think we put a lot of things in place uh, for 2018. And uh, I look forward to next year. I think we're going to see a continuation of what we've done. and. Uh, it's going to be an exciting time for us. So uh, I have a couple other things. If you want me to go ahead with those. Uh, I attended the Developed Disabilities Board meeting last Thursday night. Again, I want to thank Cy for attending regional planning on my behalf, which made it possible to attend that meeting. Uh, I, I don't want to go into any great detail and say I thought it was a beneficial meeting to be at, and uh, I think it served an important purpose for my being there. And, uh, and I'd just like to extend Happy New Year to everyone in our county employees, residents, taxpayers, uh, what a great county to live in, what a great county to be a member of, and uh, we're all very fortunate. And uh, and the last thing, because I know Commissioner Benton will mention it, everybody be sure to tune in uh, Monday evening oh. about 5 o'clock. There's a ball game that everybody can get behind and support, and, uh, and all I'll say is go Sooners. <laughs> uh, yeah, Commissioner Lewis, if you were a ardent college football fan and your team were playing for a national championship don't you think you would wear a tie 
that oh. had uh, <laughs> your college football team on it. Ah, yes, I would. So, uh, Com uh, Commissioner Merrill, what do you think? Your team it, isn't playing for national and championship, and you're wearing a tie. Yeah, but they're playing tomorrow night. Oh. So. <laughs> well, there's actually, there, I'm hoping there'll be two more games Oklahoma will be involved in. Uh, it seemed more appropriate to wear it the following week. Oh, uh, okay. The championship. Uh, you're hedging. Uh, All right. Gosh. Commissioner Lewis. Well, I'd like to first uh, thank the Sooners. <laughs> would you? A little premature. <laughs> yeah. oh, I would like to thank our president, uh, Commissioner Benton, for chairing these meetings in a very expeditious and thorough and thorough manner. Thanks for, thank you. So, You're so, excellent. It's a rowdy crowd. Sure, person. <laughs> yes. And uh, also to our team uh, who has worked so hard, our our county administrator, our deputy administrator, Cy and, and Dawn and Jane has worked very, very hard and and uh, on so many various projects. Our whole team, I, Bob and Jenna and Karen helping Cy and uh, our clerks and everyone, uh, all our directors, our, our, uh, all our team to uh, that who I Let's see, around 1,100 people. I so I better just people. say thank you, and I'll leave it at that. And I'm, I very much agree with the comments that were made about uh, looking forward, and now it's up to us and our team to implement the, uh, the plan. Uh, very wise words that I thank you for, and I'd like to wish everyone a very happy New Year, and go Bucks. Go Bucks, that's right. And... Um, in honor of Lucy, our bulldog, I want to say go dogs. Oh, go dogs, yes. Because they're playing this team from Oklahoma on Monday night. Oh, uh-oh. So, uh-oh. So we've got a lunch, I think, on that we one. We do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Um, we have, uh, I'm sorry, what? You have nothing? Uh, no, I don't have anything else. Just go bucks, go dogs, seat sooners. Um, and we do have need for executive we session. Do. Resolution number 17-1390. And then I have adjourned into executive session for consideration of employment compensation of a public employee or public official for pending or imminent litigation. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-1390. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. All right. We're in executive session. Okay, very good.